I'd first like to introduce uh, the father of the bride to give his speech. Right, thanks for that. And we said no heckling. Remember all those people I spoke to. Um, so where do I start? First of all, Jessica and Tristan, Mr. and Mrs. George, congratulations. I'd, also, I'd just like to say, well done, really, because you selected the venue, you've organised the wedding, you've done everything, bar a little bit of help, you've done a fantastic job, guys. Just moving on then to... Oh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just moving on to the, to the guests, really. Um, just wanted to welcome you all to Tissingdon Hall. As you can see, it's a fabulous venue. If you get the chance, have a good look around. It's a, as you've seen, it's very scenic. And... Just wanted to thank you for attending, for joining in the celebrations of Jessica and Tristan's marriage today. I believe we've got guests from, from my home in the northeast of England, Middlesbrough. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a few there. To, to uh, Tristan's family from Devon and Cornwall, from I think Sur oh, Surrey, Kent, where you live, High Peak, and also from Cheshire, where we live. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. And in addition to Michael and Deborah, who've come all the way from their home in Switzerland, we also have visitors from Finland <laughs> and from S Spain somewhere. From Spain, yes. And if I've forgotten anybody, I'm very sorry. But I think I also want to just say something about two very special sort of guests today. Firstly, to Jean, Jessica's grandma. There, Jean. <laughs> And to Tristan's granny, Diana. Right. Uh, just like to say that, you know, for Jessica and Tristan and all the families, it actually makes it such a special day that you can both be here. So thank you for that. So now, as is customary, I'd like to say a few words about my wonderful daughter and Tristan's beautiful bride, Jessica. Jessica, you'll, you'll recall over the years whenever you were a bit sad, a bit down, a bit troubled, or just, just needed a chat, you'd give me a call, and immediately on hearing my voice, you'd break down into tears. Yeah. We, <laughs> and we called it happy tears. Yeah. But today, when I saw Jessica, and I walked in and saw her for the first time, looking so beautiful and radiant, she took my breath away, darling, and we were laughing about it, but my happy tears came first. <laughs> But I've, I've, I've given the strict instructions, no more blubbing, because that was one blub too much for me today, so. <laughs> but you, your mum your mum and I and your sisters are so immensely proud of you. You know, both as a person, you're a very caring, you know, wonderful girl, lady, beautiful inside and out. And we're immensely proud of you in terms of that and also your career, how you've worked hard to get where you are as a, as a lawyer. Your mum and I are very proud to be your parents and, and even more delighted to be best friends. Uh, for those who know Jessica, you'll see she's a very calm and collected person. Um, something that she definitely doesn't get from me, it's 100% <laughs> from her mum. But I think there's a lot more to Jess. You know, she has a strong, determined character. You know, when she was a little girl, you know, a, a great child she was, but she was so easy going. I used to worry, you know, is she going to cope with the big bad world? You know, will her talents emerge? Will she have any drive? But, you know, I shouldn't have been worried. It, you know, all the way through her life, you know, from a school child to present day, she basically has never shirked any challenge, whether or not it's academic, sporting, or even work. When she was 15, as a young gymnast, she broke her ankle for the second time. Yeah, for the second time, only to be told by the doctor six weeks later, sorry, we're gonna have to break it, reset it, and pin it again. And, and never, not once did she mourn, she, not once did she show any self-pity. You know, from the, Tristan, from the Duke of Edinburgh, from the gymnastics, 
to holding your hand on the roller coasters, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to actually skydiving in Australia, mm -hmm. to walking across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the top of it that is, along with you know, six years of study to qualify, you know, you've demonstrated that you have guts and determination. And as, as the song, as the 80s song says, the Billy Ocean song, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And that, for me, is Jessica. So, but that's, there's a bit more to Jessica. She knows how to enjoy herself. I mean, I think the, I believe that the, the hen party was very successful and well done. Yeah, and well, well done to the sisters who organized that. Um, but I was really pleased, Jessica, to, to see, unlike two of your sisters who got up for the karaoke, you weren't tempted to get up and sing like Jessie J. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that, and if anybody wants to know, a bit of a private joke, given away by the laugh, I think, on that table. <laughs> but, it, but if you'd like to, I think Zoe and Laura are the people you need to speak to. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, in, but in, in, in summary, Jess, you know, I spoke to your sister last week, one of your sisters, and talking generally about, no, it's too, you know, Jess, it's too perfect. And she actually said, Dad, Jess is as near as perfect as you're going to get. And, you know, you are a delightful daughter, a fantastic sister, and, and so easy going, easy to love. You know, we, uh, we're immensely proud of you. You're a special lady, and Tristan, I know she's, you know, you're, she's going to make you a wonderful life, wife. So please, you're a lucky man, look after for me. So now to the, the groom. Now, I wasn't sure really if... Um... <laughs> what was that? Well, I wasn't sure if it was customary for the father of bride to say anything about the groom, but after 10 years, I thought I was worth a few words. So, but, but first of all, I mean, to Michael and Deborah, you've got a fantastic son. I mean, he is, I'm sure you're immensely proud of him, as we all are. I mean, he's great to be around. He's so full of energy. <laughs> exactly. Positive and as said, and we noticed a lot of that on the stag do, Tristan, as well. <laughs> and really, with your work ethics, you know, I'm, it's no surprise to me that you're doing so well in your chosen career of PR. Tristan, to you, you know, after 10 years, you are like uh, a brother to the girls, uh, to Jessica's sisters, and, you know, like a son even to, to Liz and I. Yeah, that was a bit... Bit soppy, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but um, mm -hmm. um, but what I would like to just mention is that what I liked about you when when you tell us about Jessica, and you're very proud about telling us the story of really how you met Jessica her first year at university, <laughs> and you tried to court her on many occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Only to be rejected on many occasions. <laughs> but, but as you're always proud to tell me, you say, but you persevered. <laughs> and as you used to tell us with a big smile, you claimed the prize. <laughs> well, I'll just say that we, the Mullins, are really pleased that you persevered and claimed the prize. Yep. <laughs> But Tristan, or known to a few of us as Ronaldo, because there's, there's a bit of a story to that as well, but I think that was Tristan's vanity coming in. He liked that one, didn't you, being called Ronaldo? <laughs> but on a, on a personal basis, I'd like to just thank you on three counts. The first one is that as a man in a house full of five ladies, you know, and a big sport lover, I used to feel guilty about putting the television on all the time. <laughs> but then when a bigger sport lover than me came along, it was very easy. I just blamed you. <laughs> and then secondly, you know, again, in the Mullen house, not the quietest of houses, can be a bit, little bit loud. 
And I had the dubious title of being called the loudest. <laughs> but again, you came along. <laughs> and wow, you took it away just like that. <laughs> and thirdly, as a Plymouth Argyle fan, Oh, this is not going to go well. Um, <laughs> as a Plymouth Argyle fan... What's the score? Yeah, 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 yeah. what's the score? Yes, sir. As a Plymouth Argyle fan, you know, arguably, and I said arguably, a less fashionable football club than my beloved Middlesbrough, <laughs> you lifted my spirits because I realised there's always somebody worse off than yourself. <laughs> But Tristan, the biggest compliment I can pay you is that the strength of the relationship you have with Liz and myself is, with the girls is you're already a member of the family. Today is just about making it official. So on behalf of Liz and I, welcome son-in-law. <laughs> I'd just like to say a couple of things about the couple, you collectively, and certainly today's attendance and the stag and the Hindu attendance says it all. You know, you um, are very popular as a couple. That's evidence alone. Um, but I was at the stag do, and somebody, I was talking to somebody about you and the, as a couple, as an individual, and they said to me something that I just wanted to repeat, and it was along the lines of, Jess and Tristan are great as individuals, but even better as a couple. And I thought, you know, what an accolade to have just before you're about to embark on hopefully a long-lasting and successful marriage. And so finally, which everybody would be pleased about, I'm, I believe the father of the bride gives some marital advice. I've got several pages here. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, what, as you know, within the Mullen household, as is tradition, on special occasions, I would give a poem. I'm not, uh, what I'd like to do is just give you the marital advice as in a very short but simple acrostic poem to the, to the word marriage. So for this, I might, I'll reference if you don't, don't mind. So marriage, M. Make laughter the soundtrack of your marriage. A, always say you love, don't just show it. R, remember Jessica, husbands are like a fine wine, they mature on age. <laughs> R, Tristan, to keep the marriage love cup full, when you're right, when you're wrong, admit it. When you're right, keep quiet. <laughs> I invest in and support each other's future. Both are as equally important. A, all great relationships are dependent on trust. Start as you mean to go on. G, goal in marriage is not to think alike, it's to think together. And E, enjoy and embrace family life. A good family is worth its weight in gold. So, Jessica and Tristan, you know, Mr. and Mrs. George, congratulations. You're a wonderful couple, and I know you'll have a very successful marriage. So all that remains is really for me to ask the guests if you could be upstanding and join me as we toast the happy couple to Jessica and Tristan. Yeah. Jessica and Tristan. Thank you. I don't think I need this, to be honest, with my booming voice, but I'll, uh, I'll keep it low down. 
So I apologize because I'm not as prepared as Pete. That was pretty impressive. But um, I'll try and not look at, at my notes here. This isn't the football scores. This is my notes. I'll try and have a look. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so firstly, thank you very much to Pete for your incredibly kind words. I think, you know, Pete and Liz, both of you, since I first met you and as I've got to know you over the years, you've really become second parents to me. I've really felt like part of the Mullen family um, from the moment I entered, really. Um, you're really the most kind-hearted people I've, I've ever met. And also, we have the most unbelievably fun times as well. <laughs> and I'd probably be going on forever if I was to ramble on about just a few and I could involve all the girls, the bridesmaids, all their boyfriends, but I, I won't go on any longer. Um, secondly, thanks very much to, to my mum and dad. Um, they've always been there to support me, and despite living abroad in another country and that bringing its difficulties as it does with not being able to sometimes see each other as regularly as we would have liked, um, I wouldn't be the person that I am today without them. They've been a massive help in guiding me, particularly during my teenage years when I was a bit, of a, a, a bit of a wild one, and particularly during my first year of uni as well. So uh, thank you for bringing me back on track. Um, and thirdly, I really appreciate everyone coming today. It's, it's amazing how many of you are here. Um, you know, a lot of you have kind of contributed to the day, even if it's just been words of advice and, and things like that in the lead up and keeping Jess and I calm when we're trying to arrange everything. So, so I really appreciate that. And just some special thanks, firstly, to Matt for all his help in, in organizing everything. You know, as best man organizing the stag do, which was unbelievable for those bits that I remember. Um, and, and also to, to um, Jack and Alex as well, or Lynam and Beavers, as, as we refer to them as. Um, you know, they've been brilliant, brilliant help on the day, although I will forgive them for uh, being about 10 hours before this moment and they still didn't have any shoes or a belt. So uh, well done for sourcing that so quickly. Um, I'd also like to, to thank the bridesmaids for all your contribution. My brilliant sister Clara and Jess's wonderful sisters, Olivia, Chrissy and Georgie. Uh, they've done an absolutely fantastic job and they've really kind of, you know, mucked in and, and helped out, you know, from producing things like playlists um, through to kind of all the decorations on the tables. They've done that. So and obviously you absolutely you all look unbelievable today. So, uh, you know, amazing. And thank you all for all your help. <laughs> And next, and most importantly, to my wife, <laughs> Jessica George. Can't quite believe I'm saying that. Absolutely brilliant feeling. Um, as Pete mentioned, and obviously pretty much a, a lot of you in the room will know, I was absolutely head over heels for Jess from, from the moment I met her. Um, and it was really the moment I set eyes on her. I remember during that first week of university, first meeting her, I remember her dancing later that night. I remember exactly what she was wearing during that first meeting. <laughs> Probably sounds a bit creepy, but it wasn't. It was, so, um, so yeah, you know, and after that, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit um, that, you know, I, I pursued Jess a, a little bit, um, which a lot of people here, as I said, will know. Um, and I think it was probably, you know, fairly obvious that I had eyes for her at the time. And, you know, I didn't think so, but I've been told otherwise many a time. <laughs> Jess maybe didn't feel the same way initially. Um, and I thought I was playing it absolutely cool. Um, but, you know, luckily uh, I pursued. And, you know, at the end of, of that first year of university, um, you know, Jess finally took a chance on me, which, which is absolutely brilliant. So, you know, I was, I was overwhelmed, you know, really, really happy. Um, and, and there's one particular moment that I'll remember, and it's, it's sort of our first unofficial date at the end of that first year of university. And we were in university accommodation, and we had a, a canteen, and we had a meal plan. So every week, we used to get sort of £40 on our meal cards um, on a Monday morning, and we'd be able to, to go down uh, and, you know, split, split our finances accordingly and get our meals for the week. And I was always the same. So every Monday would arrive, I'd get that £40 on the card, I'd go down to, to the canteen, <laughs> and I'd be splashing out playing the big man. I'd have burger and chips, I'd have a starter, I'd, have, I'd probably, you know, have a chocolate pudding, I'd have fizzy drinks, I'd go back up, I'd get another round, you know, I'd, I'd be coming back to the table. I'd go to Starbucks for lunch, I'd have the most expensive toasty. And by Thursday morning, I had about £1.90 left on my card every week. And I'd always say, next week it'll be different. You know, I, I, will, I will be better organised. I will make sure that I have my money on my card and I split it for the week. 
but it never happened. And obviously, you know, lots of you here who were at university with us, they knew that. And so some poor soul, I remember one week, took pity on me. Luckily, they were going home for the weekend. They had some money left on their card. I got to Thursday, I didn't have anything. So someone handed me their card. It had, you know, 20 pounds or whatever left on it. And they said, here you go, you can use that to fund your food for the weekend. And I was, I was really grateful, you know, I'd had a great start to the week and now I could have a great end to the week as well. <laughs> Um, and I was in my element, and I just started seeing Jess, and the first thing I did, I went and I went round to her flat, and I knocked on her door, and I said, right, we're going out for breakfast this morning. And it was Saturday morning. And she looked at me, and she said, you've got money on your card. And I said, yeah, yeah, I've saved up this week, absolutely saved up. So I took her down to the university canteen, and I said, get whatever you like, it's on me this week. And she, she filled her plate up, you know, with her full English. And we got to the, you know, we got to the till. And I did the old last minute switcheroo on the card. And I quickly scanned, scanned someone else's card. So, you know, what I'd like to say is, I'd actually like to propose a toast to, and I can't remember who it was, unfortunately, but to that mystery person who lent me their card. Without you, we might not be here today. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> But on a more serious note, the following 10 years after that have been the best that I could have ever wished for. And I've never, ever had a doubt about that time, you know, about Jess um, being the person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Um, we've, got so, we've got such an unbelievable relationship and so many memories together as well. You know, all the, you know, lots of different holidays over the years, great times with friends, you know, moving to our first flat and then buying our first house. But more importantly, we're just so happy together. Jess is the person who keeps me absolutely grounded, supports me, whatever. And we also just have so much fun together. And I obviously find her absolutely unbelievably attractive. <laughs> I mean, how could you not? She is 100% my soulmate, and I'm so, so lucky to be able to spend the rest of my life with Jess. <laughs> Seeing Jess today for the first time was the happiest moment. And it honestly felt like it was just the two of us there in that church. She looked absolutely stunning today. So I'd like to propose a toast to my amazing, beautiful wife, Jessica George. To Jessica. It's done. It's done. That's it. Might as well just carry on straight away. Um, <laughs> yeah, really nice speeches, guys. Um, so yeah, for the guy, for people here who don't know me, I'm Matt, and I've had the honour of being asked by Tristan to be his best man today, um, which yeah, means a lot to me. So thank you for that. Um, first, I'd just like to say a massive congratulations to you two. Um, I hope the day's been everything that you hoped for and more. And, and also thanks to the two families for putting on such an amazing day for everyone here. So thank you very much, guys. <laughs> So Tristan and I first met each other nearly 11 years ago now, which sounds kind of crazy. Um, it's gone very quick. And we were just by chance put in, this, in the same flat in first year of uni. Uh, I was one of the first people there, and the flat slowly filled up with people, and there, there was a sense of anticipation about who the final flat, flatmate would be. <laughs> so, someone briefly claimed to meet an international student from Sweden or America or somewhere. <laughs> uh, but they didn't know too much else about him. Uh, but before long, the door flung open, and a sort of long-limbed, long-haired Tristan came <laughs> ba bouncing in, carrying a load of IKEA shopping, which he'd forgotten to get beforehand. Um, and yeah, we've been mates pretty much ever since then. You, you somehow forgot to bring any drinks to that first night, I remember. So uh, I kind of took pity, and we sat and, and shared my four-pack of Fosters, which <laughs> stre stretched quite far on that first night. Um, and, and yeah, my initial impression was pretty positive, but you did have this... Uh, well, he did have this kind of strange thing. He turned up to uni with immediately trying to bring in his own slang, which, uh, <laughs> which was kind of weird. Um, he'd use, there were some words. One was palind. I don't know if anyone's heard palind. Ashley palind. Yeah, Ashley palind. There we go. Well, another one was tannis. I still don't know what it means. Um, and you'd be having a conversation with me. He'd just throw these words in. And, and honestly, they'd, they'd be met with confused looks as people were like, who is this? What is going on here? Like, who is this guy? Um, but yeah, it, it uh, paid off for you, I think, because actually a lot of the guys you met early on in uni are here today and a lot of your closest friends. 
So it didn't go too badly for you. Um, so yeah, other than the, the question approach to, to meeting new people, what kind of really struck me about Tristan early on was uh, just how funny he is to be around. And uh, he always lifts, lifts the mood of whatever you're doing with an almost childlike enthusiasm for, for having fun. I mean, I don't think I've ever met anyone so animated um, <laughs> as you. Um, you. He also has a rare quality where it's actually really hard to be annoyed with him for some reason, um, which I know is hard to imagine if you've ever been in the position where he wakes you up after a night out, he's stomping about, <laughs> he's chanting phrases from the night before that kind of don't mean anything. He, he repeat, repeatedly adds the absolute in front of any phrase that he says. In fact, this morning, I was, I was uh, he somehow didn't calculate the correct number of beds last night, so I ended up on the floor last night. Um, and I, I was lying there, and the, I was woken up about 7 a.m. by Tristan, who just sat bolt upright and went, ah, oh, the absolute surreal feeling. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, yeah. So, Jess, I hope you're prepared for things like oh, the absolute honeymoon in the coming days. Um, I've experienced this inability to be annoyed with him on quite a few occasions. Um, there was one time during the first year of uni um, where he, I think Tristan was going out with some mates, uh, but I had an exam the next morning, so I thought, oh, I'll get an early night. Um, I better stay in and, and be all right for the exam tomorrow. So my w one request to him was, oh, can you just try to keep it down when you get home later? He said, yeah, yeah, mate, sure, no problem, no problem at all. And about 3 or 4 a.m., I hear s sort of strange noise outside my, uh, my bedroom window which is on a ground floor. So I open up the curtain, look outside, look outside the window, and Tristan's there, on all fours, in the mud, <laughs> retching, trying to put a sentence together. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what is going on here? And he just looks up at me and completely innocently goes, oh, sorry, mate, just wanted to uh, check I wasn't disturbing you, being sick out here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think w we, we were both back in the summer resitting exams, um, but I can't remember ever being annoyed <laughs> about that incident. So. Yeah, somehow just impossible to be annoyed with him. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't just nights out that, that were your interest in first year. You had many interests. You used to sprint back between lectures to play your MK Don's career mode on FIFA. <laughs> so keen to get to it, you used to climb in through the window instead of going through the door to get an extra game in. Um, there was cricket, losing a few bets, um, just to name a few. But yeah, th um, there was one thing that took your interest more than anything, and, and that was Jess. Um, as, as you've all heard, it's probably fair to say it wasn't quite reciprocated at first. Um, but, but yeah, there was kind of, from a mate's point of view, a, a sense of inevitability that they would kind of end up together. Um, us as a group of mates, we'd often try and encourage him whilst we were getting ready for a night out, saying, oh, this is the night, this is the night you go and win her over. But um, we'd always end up back in our flat, kebab in hand, just to, <laughs> trying to wonder where it all went wrong that night. <laughs> Back, back to the drawing board. Um, it got so desperate at one point, I think one, one of us even wrote an anonymous love letter on Tristan's behalf, although at the time I don't think he knew much about it. Uh, I think it stated, I don't know if you remember this, Jess, how, uh, how um, we said, you, you melt his heart like Swiss cheese on a warm summer's day. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that it's the letter that swayed it, but they got together pretty, uh, pretty quickly after that. <laughs> and, uh, and they haven't looked back since. Um, I say it's, it's now pretty impossible to think of one the, without the other. And I know Tristan's just as smitten as he was at the start. Um, I've never seen his care and commitment for you waver. And um, I'm not just saying this, but in over 10 years, I can't remember a single, even minor complaint that Tristan's raised. So um, yeah, just as there was no surprise when you first got together at uni. Um, I remember there was no surprise between me, Alex, and Jack, the other groomsmen, when you messaged us saying, I'm going to propose to Jess tonight. Um, it just felt really right, and we almost couldn't believe it hadn't happened already. Um, so yeah, to you guys, you, you guys have adapted to every step of your new relation, or your relationship with ease, and I know this will be no different. Uh, I can't think of anyone or any other people that marriage seems so perfect. So if everyone here could just uh, join me in raising a glass to say congratulations. I um, wish them all, all the happiness uh, to Jess and Tristan. Yes. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. That was so nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, well done. Yeah, well done, man. <laughs>